Hi, welcome to some classical conversations, memory work, and I hope that we, <laughs> and the dog, because apparently she's very needy and is very jealous that I'm talking to you. So I actually bought this <laughs> for my doTERRA videos and she's gonna hang out with us for homeschool too. So this is Ellie, our adopted mini schnauzer. So Sadie's gonna help me too, I hope, but we want to provide you with some of the memory hooks and tactics that have worked really well in our home, hoping that they'll help you in your home too. So this video is foundations. We're going to do some things for younger and then I'm going to expand a little bit for the older kids to expound some information. So let's see. Sadie? Hey, do you want to help? Sadie, do you want to help me out? What? <laughs> okay. You want to help me? Sure. Awesome. All right, here we go. What do you want to start with? Um, well, this is right here. We conveniently have this here. Okay, and that's good for a warm-up. We're going to do our science, all right? So let's hold this out, and we can put it down to where they can see it. How convenient we have it. All right. Okay, so science, the classifications of living things has changed in that they've added domain. So I thought for my class, well, how can we add that without changing this? We, we do the rest of it to the tune of Frere Jaca, or Are You Sleeping? And we are going to do it in a round because all around the world, there are living things to classify. So we're going to tune up together and say, do, domain, domain, domain. And then we're just going to sing the song the way we did because then it fits. Want to do it higher for the little domain. kids? Okay. Domain, do, domain. Here we go. <clears throat> Kingdom phylum, kingdom phylum, class order, class order, family genus species, family genus species, classifications of living things. All right, let's go a little bit higher because of that note is kind of low. Ready? Domain. Let's see there. Do you want to do it in a round? Yes. Okay, do you want me to I'll start? I'll give a second. I'll give a second. Okay. Kingdom phylum, or domain. Domain. Ready? <laughs> Kingdom phylum, kingdom phylum, class kingdom order, phylum, class order, phylum, family genus species, class family order, species, family genus species, family genus species, species, classifications of living things. Let's do a little bit higher. Domain. Domain. Ready? Kingdom phylum, kingdom phylum, class order, class order, family genus species, class genus species, family genus species, family genus species, classifications of living things, domain, domain. Whenever I was going kingdom phylum, kingdom phylum, my second time I accidentally said class order. Oh, that's okay. We're gonna phylum as we classify them, right? So there you go. We'll put this down here conveniently here. Yeah, we could have just kept it there and not had it on the table. All right, what do you want to do next? Well, on this, you'll see a place to click for timeline. We've had timeline motions. They are English. motions. They are not um, <clears throat> they are not sign language, official ASL. So on that link, there are motions that I put together years ago, the first time that this timeline came out, because the way I think and the way I lead with kids is I want memory hooks along the way to lead from one word to the next word with my hands, because I talk with my hands anyway. And that way, because the song repeats a lot of the same tune over and over, they won't get stuck in an age. They'll be able to remember, oh, wait a minute, I'm off. Go back to maybe doing a motion that'll hook them into the next motion. So we're going to demonstrate that, but you can learn the whole thing through those videos. So let's do that I after did. we do timeline. Okay? okay, so timeline, we're gonna do <clears throat> like an ancient Egyptian beard. beard. Okay, so age of ancient empires, creation to circa 450 AD, creation and the fall, the flood and the Tower of Babel, 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 Babel. Make a big mess, Mesopotamia and Sumer, we're gonna go and clean up the mess. And on the map, on Sumer, there's a little triangle. If you flip it upside down, you can draw an S in it like a super symbol, okay? So Mesopotamia and Sumer, and then you're in the perfect place to walk like an Egyptian. Egyptians, 3000 BC, 3000 BC. You're gonna take your three and you're gonna go in the river. Cause you're gonna go in this river. Okay, in this river right here. In this river valley oh, civilization. Oh yeah. 
Indus River Valley Civilization, Minoans, like little minnows. We're going to take seven, and the mice are going to be on our knees, okay? So let's go back to the three. Ready? 3,000 BC, 3,000 BC, Indus River Valley Civilization, Minoans, and Mycenaeans. And then for next week, you're there for seven wonders of the ancient world. And then you're going to stop here and make a P, capital P for patriarchs, which is where it'll go next week. All right. So you can watch the other videos if that interests you. You may already have your own moves, but hopefully that'll help those of you who don't. All right. English grammar you want to do next, right? Because I did E, mini, mini, mini. Oh, perfect. Okay. So English grammar, why don't you jump and make a big capital A triangle shape and I'll just make an A with my hand since, have. since I have the dog. All right. Okay. Ready? People are going to watch these and be like, yeah, the lady with the dog and the daughter. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Ready? A. A. Preposition, preposition relates. A. And we just bring the A and the A to kind of a focus. Ready? A. A. Preposition, preposition relates. A, a noun or a pronoun, pronoun to, to, or you can make a two with this hand and bring it together, another, another word. word. Okay? And what that means, you can see here, if I'm just girl hat, is it with the hat, by the hat, under the hat, over the hat? Beside the hat, t on top or atop the hat, right? You don't know. So they link words together to make them make sense. So let's do it again. Ready? A, a preposition, preposition relates a noun, noun or a pronoun, pronoun to another word. Or you could just go to another word. Yes. Perfect. All right. So hopefully that helps you. We're going to talk more about this in a second because we're going to dive in it deeper when we do the Latin ideas for older kids, like this girl here, she's a master's two, she's 11. And so I like to think I've got a son, you might hear his piano playing upstairs right now, he's in challenge too. So now that we've had some Latin under our belt, parents of littles, don't ignore the English, don't ignore the Latin, pound in those memory pegs now because you will use them later. We're gonna demonstrate that in a second, but first we'll just do this little kid grammar part for the Latin. Are you ready? So nominative subject. If you smack your thighs and then clap. Or you can, if you're sitting down, you can smack the table. Oh, let's just do the table because then I won't hit the dog. Ready? Nominative, nominative subject. subject. Let's do it again. Nominative, nominative subject. subject. So now you're going to put your hands in your blue jeans because you've got possessions in your pockets. Ready? In your jeans. Yes, in your jeans. Genitive, Genitive possessive. possessive. Genitive, Genitive possessive. possessive. Start over. Nominative subject. Genitive possessive. Now, you can't look directly at the sun. So we want indirect sunlight. So make a big sunshine. For say, day, dative. Very good. Dative. Indirect, indirect object. object. Okay. Or again. you could go, if you say dative, you could go like dative, like you're using data on your phone. Yeah, because if I'm using data, I'm talking to you indirectly, right? Dative. dative. Indirect, indirect object. object. All right. And then accusative. Accusative. Direct, direct object. object. So the verb gives the direct punch to the door or the direct kick to the wall, right? So the direct object is what receives that action. I'm not going to punch my daughter. We're just going to punch the air. That's the direct object. Ready? Accusative. Accusative. Direct, direct object. object. Now, ablative. Uh, blah, 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 blah. There's extra words in a prepositional phrase. And so those help, like we said, relate words to other words. So in Latin, there's just an ending that you add to a noun that does that job. So it, it takes care of a blah, 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 other words. So we're going to say ablative, ablative, and then we're going to pick up those words and look through the object of the preposition. I like to make a heart. And she likes to make a heart. What a sweet object. Ready? So here we go. Let's do all of them. Nominative, Nominative subject. subject. Genitive, possessive. possessive. Dative. Dative. Indirect object. object, or indirect object. Accusative. Accusative. Direct object. Ablative object of the preposition. All right. Oh, look at the time. It's time for me to go back in my house. Oh, she doesn't want to go over this. Huh. Bye. Okay, so let's talk about Latin for a second. 
I did this with my master's two class the other day, and they're probably just going to remember, yeah, the noun cases are the thing that Amy carried the briefcase around the room and went on and on about. I'll remember that for memory master. <laughs> but I want to do that with you right now for a second. Nominative, we learn in essentials that nominative, the base root is nomen, which means name. And you every sentence has a subject and a verb, right? So nomen or name becomes the subject. What has a handle? The case. And I used case for all of these because we're talking about noun cases to help it stick in your head. Nominative subject, the case, the case what? Has a handle. Genitive, possessive. So possessive is something that has possession. We learn in essentials that we have um, ones that are um, like possessive noun adjectives describing something like this one is going to be, or we have possessive pronoun adjectives like my book describes the book. It's not just book, it's my book. Big difference, right? So genitive possesses, we're going to say the case's contents are valuable. The cases isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about the contents. Cases is describing what those contents are, okay? The case's contents are valuable. Dative indirect object Give the case a shine. Here, we're not giving the case to somebody. We're giving a shine to something, and the case jumped in there to get that direct object, right? So in essentials, for indirect objects, if you look at I-O, you think, I want that object. Something jumps in to receive that. So if I said, bake a cookie, cookie would be the direct object, but if I said, bake me a cookie, then me, when we um, diagram it, you'll learn later in Essentials that the posts, the lines are vertical and it looks like a field goal. Like someone jumped right in there to get that direct object. So in this case, the case jumped into that indirect object part to receive the shine. I hope that makes sense. And then for the direct object, push the case. Now we're actually using that verb to the case, right? We're pushing it, push the case to me. And I put the pink around it because that's a prepositional phrase. And to me, guess what the word to is? It's a preposition because it's linking where to push the case. Push the case, me. Case is coming to me. We're linking that together, right? And then ablative, object of the preposition, is right here we put case there. Right here, me would be the object of the preposition. But here we're going to do it with case. The man walks with the case. So the preposition is linking it so you get understanding. He's not walking over the case or by the case or under the case or inside the case. He's walking with the case. And the case is the object of that with, that preposition. Does that make sense? I hope you just learned something. I love this stuff. So you're going to get a lot of it. Over here for English grammar, I also wanted to point out for essentials, when you take prepositions, I love to tell people, even from the first week on, if you're unpacking a sentence and you're going to diagram it, look for those prepositional phrases first because it'll be easier to find the subject and the verb. So sometimes they're adjectival and they're um, describing the nouns, and sometimes they're adverbial and they're describing the action. So I just wanted to show you this really quick since this week we have been talking about prepositions. The girl with the hat, okay? That's describing the girl. But you can also have them adverbial. Taught with joy. Hopefully you're feeling that from our family. I'm teaching with joy because I want you to love this stuff. Another one, the girl by the hat. If I took this off and set it next to me, I wouldn't be um, wearing it. I would be by it. But right now I'm also under it. But that could, you know, change it up in your mind as you're reading a story. Adverbs taught with joy, taught for joy. Some of you may need to get into this stuff and just teach it, even if you don't understand it yet, because over time, that for joy is gonna come back to you like seeds that are planted in good soil that produce joyful fruit in your home. So teach for joy if you can't teach with joy yet. <laughs> and then hopefully I've just taught you amidst joy and that on the other side of this, you have joy and we'll have a great week. So there's some foundations, a little bit of essentials. I'm going to come back and do some things that are specific to essentials week one. Thanks for watching.